Hello magical makers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Nicola of Woven Tales Designs. In today's video we are going to work up another version of the Ever After Mouse Ears, my newest crochet pattern. This is the no glue version of the mouse ears. You will not need a glue gun for this. You will need all the other materials that I had listed in my previous tutorials, but you can put your glue guns down and work with your hands not getting burnt for once. Know that, that this is still considered an intermediate pattern, but advanced beginners, please, I welcome you into this space. We are going to break down everything in this video. I'm going to walk you through all the difficult parts slowly and easily. And the magic of YouTube is that you can slow the video down at any speed that you prefer or speed it up if you're bored of me talking and get through the pattern at your own pace. For those that have not made the other version of the pattern, know that you are going to have to go back and you're going to have to work up the ear bases of the ear. So that is these circles here. You're going to have to fasten them off with a longer tail at 18 inches. So if you haven't made those yet, please go back into my tutorials I've listed down below and check those out. I have left and right handed versions of both of those videos. And you will also need to work up the bow. You're going to have to work that up with probably six inches more of a tail than instructed in in the video so go ahead and work that up you won't have to make it and form it into the bow just yet we'll do that together on video so you can see how we work up the tail and sew that into the piece also know that the skills that you need to create this pattern if you haven't done it yet already you're going to need to work in the round for this pattern you're going to have to be used to working into the third loop of a half double crochet stitch and we're going to do some seam work but the seam work is great it's easy once you get the hang of it there's a rhythm to it and I will break everything down and slow it down for you so no worries on that and on that note let's get into this video and check out our materials list okay magical makers let's talk about those materials and tools that we'll be needing to get started here we're gonna use two colors of yarns here color A and color B color A for me is this variegated yarn you see and color B is going to be the solid yarn and I've left those yards on the screen for you you're going to need polyfill stuffing that is super important you will absolutely need a one inch wide headband that is a non-negotiable that's listed below in my Amazon finds if you need it. We have for our tools a six millimeter hook or J hook, a tapestry needle, the curved ones are actually super preferable and helpful in this project, and you will need a measuring tape just so we can get that symmetry down just right. You will absolutely need a pair of scissors per the usual. And the most important thing is probably going to be these stitch markers. You're going to need about four of them. And the locking stitch markers are super helpful. So if you have those in your stash, pull those out, get those ready to go. And then let's talk about these pre-made pieces that we're going to need from the original pattern. So I've lifted, listed the original pattern down below in the description. We will need four ear bases already worked up with a fastened off 18 inch long tail. 18 inch long tail. That's very important. You're going to need a bow pre-crocheted, but we don't have to form it just yet. We'll do that together on video. And uh, also another thing you will need to have a longer tail fastened off. I've left that... Uh, inch length up on the screen here and then you're going to need two ear inserts for the inside of the ears and if you've watched the video before we do those together so just have those ready to go and without further ado let's get into starting our headband cover all righty welcome to chapter one of this video this is going to go into what i like to call the headband cover or the tube that covers the headband for our project. So we will begin with our main color yarn, color A yarn, and we will work up a magic ring. And you can make the magic ring however you see fit. Um, you can watch me do it here and slow it down if you need a quick uh, review. And then I begin round one with a chain one. So make that magic ring and chain one. Into the magic ring, we are going to be working five single crochets, so one, two, three, four, and five. And then once those five are done, go ahead and pull that tail closed to close the ring. And there we have round one finished. All 
Alrighty, and then rounds two and three are really simple. We call this a Netflix and chill moment. You're just going to work single crochet in the round. Your stitch count doesn't change. You still have five single crochet at the end of both of those rounds. Just remember to start using the stitch marker here to keep track of the first stitch of every round because we will be working continuously until the end of the headband, until the end of this chapter. So, um, do as I say here and not as I do. Um, I am a little bit naughty with my stitch markers. You're gonna see evidence of that later. <laughs> Full transparency here. Um, but definitely just, there is a lot of rounds to keep track of. So just keep using that stitch marker so you don't lose sight of where you are. It's super hard to retrace your steps once you get started here. Um, and then this is gonna curl in on itself. Just go with it um, for like the first, like for the first one and a half two and a half rounds here. Um, once I get the first stitch worked and marked for round three, you're gonna see me pause. And what I'm doing here, um, just so I don't kind of get this tail in the way, I knot it, I kind of pull it tight, knot it, and I snip off the excess yarn of this tail. Cause you're not gonna need the length of this tail for anything, this initial magic ring tail. So I just kind of snip that off, get that out of my way. And before I continue on with the rest of the stitches in round three, I flip my work inside out so that the right side of my stitches are facing me. And I know this bit is super fiddly because those initial first three rounds are very tight, five stitches around. I mean, gosh, that's like, you know, a baby's finger can fit in there or mine, I guess. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and work on the last stitches of round three and then I will see you for the first increase round. Alrighty, so for round four, this is our first increase round. We are going to work an increase stitch into that first stitch that we see here. So two single crochet into that. Again, don't forget to replace no stitch marker. And then you're going to single crochet four or single crochet into the rest of the stitches around. And then it's pretty simple after this, for the next six rounds after round four, you will work single crochet in the rounds, a little Netflix and chill, to give a little bit of length to our tube. And there we have our little length, super great. And look at my naughtiness, look at that. I count up from the, <laughs> the last round marks. I don't know how I work like this. I'm, it's probably a sign of, insanity um, but then here we go into round 11 very simple we are going to do like we did in round four increase into that first stitch don't forget to replace the stitch marker do better than me and then you're going to single crochet five or single crochet into the remaining stitches around and that'll give you a stitch count of seven and that is our last increase round for this pattern um, so then into the next section here a huge netflix and chill moment we will work 28 rounds of single crochet in the round and that will bring us into a really nice long length but before we get into that let me just show you um kind of how this starts to fit around our headband here i'm going to grab this um, kind of pull my loop long so you can kind of see what i'm doing here and essentially we are just making a cute little covering for our headband now if you notice that your gauge is a little bit off if your stitches are kind of really gappy or once you get the headband on here this is a great way to kind of test it out and see how your gauge works there really is no gauge here this is just what i've worked out to be um, good for my gauge um, but you can definitely adjust as you see fit super simple to do that if you have any questions about that leave me some comments down below but here we go this is our very long tube you can see how i'm still being naughty counting up from that first round there and uh this is what we got we are not done yet we are about to work up into a decrease round now All right, so round 40 is our first decrease round. I tend to use invisible decreases when we do decreasing for this pattern, um, but you can totally do a normal decrease if you wanna see how I do it here. I insert my hook into the front loop of the next stitch there, and then I go ahead and without yarning over, insert my hook into the front loop of the next stitch. So I have two front loops on my hook, just like that. 
and then yarn over and pull through the front loops just like that that's gonna gather them together kind of it almost looks like a knitted decrease right there almost looks like a yeah and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook to complete the single crochet and that's an invisible decrease again you can do a normal decrease if you're more comfortable with that I just tend to do that here because it's flatter and it tends to be not as bulky um, on the headband replacing that stitch marker at least I do it on the <laughs> shaping rounds <laughs> and then you're going to single crochet into the next five stitches and that will bring your st stitch count down to six single crochets for round 40 six single crochet All right, and after round 40, we have another small Netflix and chill moment. You're going to single crochet in the round for the next six rounds until you have 46 rounds total. Super simple. This is probably the easiest part of this whole pattern. I just have to say that right now. This is one of my favorites. Um, but yes, work up those six rounds and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, and here we have those six rounds worked up just like that. Before we move into any more crocheting, I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out here. This is where we're going to stuff that start stuffing the headband into our tube. So go ahead and um, basically just kind of like inch it along. Um, take your time. It's okay if this kind of twists and rotates. Um, just make sure there's no like rippling that you get. And we're gonna you're gonna see that you don't cover the entire headband, and that is on purpose here. You're going to need to actually overstretch this just a tad and I promise you can shrink it back once we um, are done crocheting here but this is going to help you work those last rounds of this pattern easily without having to kind of battle the plastic headband and the hook against each other we don't want any fights here in our pattern so um, there we go yep overstretched and now we can begin to work the next decrease round round 47 is decrease into that first two stitches and then single crochet four, replacing our stitch marker. And there we go. As you can see when I'm crocheting around, now that I don't have the plastic of the headband getting in my way, it's easier to grip. And that's why I tend to do that. If you find you don't have a problem working with the headband and your hook, then you don't have to overstretch it. But this is just a little trick that I've learned that really helps me out. All right then, and then we will just be working some quick single crochet in the round for the last three rounds here, rounds 48 to 50. Once you're done with that, you're just gonna fasten off with a normal tail, and you're going to take that tail and close up that end of the tube here, and do that as you see fit. I've kind of sped it up here so that you're able to um, just kind of not watch me drone on with the simple pattern here, um, but uh, once you have that circle closed up at the end, you will then just weave that tail into your work. And I'm speaking before you see it happen, just so you kind of get a heads up of what you're looking at here. And weave that tail into your work, and then don't forget to redistribute that fabric back over the headband. That is super important. You don't want a weird floppy part of the end of the headband. Um, but that should, this round count should cover the headband very easily. If you find that you need more or less rounds, that's super easy to subtract or add. Um, you'll just pull back those shaping rounds and then kind of adjust as you see fit. But this is essentially kind of a very simple way of covering a headband. I have two increases at the very beginning of the tube and then two decrease as, at the end of the tube. And I kind of take a minute to pause overstretch the covering over the headband so that I can kind of work easily into those last rounds. And that's my secret sauce. There's really nothing to it here. Um, again, this is the easiest part of the whole pattern. The hard part will be the seam work that we have later on and um, the sewing seems hard, but it's not. I promise you, just giving you a little foreshadowing, you will absolutely be able to do it. And this is a great pattern for those that feel adventurous and they're still in the beginning stages of learning kind of 
how to seam pieces together. This isn't a garment, this is an accessory. So the pressure is off and know that um, it's easy to pull out sewing stitches. So you will have an easy time. Okie dokie, so we have our headband covered. This is what it looks like with the chunky yarn. It's actually very cute with this color. I love this colorway. I've left the uh, exact yarn in the description below if you're curious on that. Now what we're gonna do is to get this headband ready for the last part of this pattern, we are going to go ahead and measure around it and place a couple of our, all four of our stitch markers just so that we know where to put the ears. And I promise you this will save you a lot of agony later. So to begin by placing the stitch markers, find the tip of the headband, it doesn't matter what side, and you're going to measure up the midline outside of the headband and find about three, uh, excuse me, six and three quarters of an inch up the side and you're going to go ahead and take that stitch marker and put that around the post just like so. The post of one of those stitches on the center, kind of like the center line of the headband. And then repeat that on the other side, again, taking the tip of the headband, measuring up the side here. I like to use the big numbers, look at me. <laughs> I have really poor vision, so that's why. <laughs> and uh, you're going to find a six and three quarter inch mark or six and a half. I kind of float between six and a half and six and three quarters. Six and three quarters tends to be my magic number, um, but you can, it, this really depends on you. How far apart do you want those ears to be? And uh, if you want them to be closer, go ahead and inch them a little bit closer towards each other. If you want them not as close, you know, pull them out. And then the next set of stitch markers, we will measure from that inner marker. I'm gonna call these the inner markers, the first two that we place. Find a two and a half inch point down towards the tip and then put a stitch marker and lock it around the post of that place. There we go. And then repeat that again. Find the other inner marker, find the two and a half inch mark going down towards the tip of the headband and mark with a locking stitch marker one of the posts of those stitches. And just last but not least, before you set this aside, just go ahead and take a second to just look at what you're working at. See if it looks symmetrical. It's super easy to think it looks good and then start sewing onto it and then you will have to pull out too many stitches and it will just be a tragedy. But this, I promise, will help so much in the long run. All right, go ahead and set that aside and let's get into chapter two. Alrighty, chapter two is gonna be a really fast chapter because we've already pre-crocheted our bow base. So I just begin here by, before, before forming the bow, weaving in that initial foundation chain tail. That is going to give us um, a free piece to work with, nothing in our way. So go ahead and weave that tail in if you haven't already done so and snip off the excess. All right, then to begin our first step in forming the bow, um, we are going to line up those chain two, skip chain two sections of the bow and make sure that they are in the center of our piece. That is going to be how we kind of create this like center of our bow. All right, and then once you have those lined up, get that tail ready to go. And you are going to go ahead and pinch those sections together just like that kind of pinch them together sometimes I use the first wrap to pinch them together and then take the long tail then and make wraps around that center of the bow now that it's nice and pinched and wrap just as many times as you want I tend to do about 20 to 25 wraps depending on um, how big my bow is how that chunky yarn works up. It's totally up to you, this is very subjective. You just wanna make sure that you have at least 12 to 18 inches left of a tail to work with when it comes to um, finishing your wraps and you're gonna need that tail to sew later. So yes, 12 to 18 inches left of the tail sh you should have. Once we do that, flip the bow over and then go ahead and insert your hook underneath those newly made wraps. Careful not to unravel the wraps 
and with our hook peeking out on the other side, we're going to loosely yarn over or just catch that yarn under the hook and then pull that yarn underneath those newly made wraps, just like so. You're gonna have a loop on your hook here. And then to finish this off and to quickly lock it into place, you're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook and then once more to kind of chain one and fasten off. And there we have it. Like I said, this is a very quick part of the pattern. Go ahead and just tighten that knot down onto the wraps in the back, just like so. Sometimes I fight with this a little bit longer than I want to. <laughs> and then there we have it, a newly formed bow. That tail will be used again for sewing later. And then once this is flipped back over to face you, go ahead and just kind of fluff those stitches out redistribute the fabric on either side of the wraps and we have a very cute bow. Look at that bow. Good job. All right, so to begin row one of chapter three, welcome to chapter three, by the way, we're going to begin with a six inch long tail. That is super important. We'll need that for sewing later. So create your slip knot that has a six inch long tail. And then we are going to go ahead and work very simple chain three to begin row one. And all of the stitches of row one and only row one, only row one will be worked into the back bumps of the foundation chain. And if you haven't worked that before, that is just this kind of like little back horizontal kind of like spinal bump on the back of our chain. Very easy to find, um, especially with chunky yarn, a little harder if you use those textured yarns, but I promise you it's there. Um, if you're not comfortable with this, it's okay. You can work into the back loop as usual with a chain, but I prefer to do back bumps. That just gives us a cleaner look in general, and it makes it easier for seaming later. You're gonna see that uh, when we work into the seam work of this chapter. And yep, it's just single crochet across into the second and third chain from the hook, and then chain one and turn for row one. Alrighty, and then beginning for this next part, it's just a one row repeat, rows two through 24 or 30, just work single crochet across, chain one, and turn, and that is it. Super simple. I don't know why I have those knots in my yarn. Oh my goodness. Do you ever find that like you get these random knots in your yarn, you're like, how did those get there? And why did I just not break off the yarn and rejoin it? <laughs> but I just chose to roll with it here because it's just a sample piece. And welcome to this Netflix and chill part for this uh, particular part of the pattern. The next part after this, just to give you a little foreshadowing, we will be working by um, seaming our pieces together, two ear bases to this one ear strip. And here is our long ear strip after we've done, I'm working the adult size here, 30 rows here. So that's 30 rows of single crochet across, chain one and turn. We will now work our seam work into phases. So grab two of those ear bases and let's get started right into seaming these pieces together. It looks hard, but it is, once you get the hang of it, pretty simple. We are going to work into the raw edges or the ends of the rows of rows one through 24 or 30. And we're also going to work into those unworked loops of the foundation chain. That's why we use those back bumps. And we will be doing both sides of the ear strips. So the only part that's not going to be seamed to these ear bases are going to be the tops of the last row made. Um, and then you're going to work into the third loops of the ear bases of that last round that you worked. So, those, if you haven't seen them before, the third loops are these horizontal bars on the back of a half double crochet stitch. And I'm just gonna insert my hook underneath one so you can see that here. So that is a horizontal bar, not to be confused with the very top of the stitches. So if I put my hook through the horizontal bar, I'm not disrupting the tops of any of those stitches. In fact, it's going to bring those stitches forward and that's what gives this, gives this ear pattern a very specific look. So to begin our first seaming stitch, I'm working into the first raw edge that I see, which for me is actually the last place I worked a single crochet stitch into that last row. So go ahead, insert your hook just like so. 
If it seems obvious, it's right for when we're working into each raw edge. So keep that in mind. It's not as hard as it looks. It's just, if you haven't done it before, a little bit daunting at first. Then grabbing our ear base, have the right side of that ear base facing you, locate that first half double crochet stitch, and then find that back bar or that third loop of that half double crochet stitch right there. And that's gonna be the shortest out of all of those, that first stitch there. So the best way to find it um, I tend to insert my hook from the wrong side to the right side, just like that, and then I kind of hook underneath and I catch that third loop. And that's how I find that first one, because sometimes, depending on the, the yarn, especially if you're working with chenille or velvet yarn, it can be a really difficult thing to find. There we go, I found that third loop. I have my raw edge and my third loop on my hook at the same time here. I'm gonna pick that yarn back up here and I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull that yarn through first the third loop. So going back the way we came, first through the third loop, and then, and you're gonna see me do this a couple times so you can kind of see it. Yep, first through the third loop. Next, through the raw edge. You should have two loops on your hook here and then you're going to complete the seaming stitch by pulling that loop through the loop on your hook. So it's essentially a slip stitch that is, in, that is joining two pieces together. We're gonna do that again so that you can see that again. It's easier um, if we kind of work a little slow for these first couple of stitches. Insert your hook into the next raw edge. That is the next obvious hole that I see here. Um, not necessarily the turning chain, but although you can use that if you so choose, I'm inserting into that next big open space below the last stitch made. And then insert your hook into the next uh, third loop here. Just like that, it should be easier to find the next third loop. Yarn over, pull through that third loop. Continue to pull through that raw edge. You should have two loops on your hook. And then lastly, pull through the loop on your hook, completing that slip stitch. And there we go. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. Find that next raw edge, just like so. Insert your hook. And insert your hook into the next third loop. Yarn over, pull through the third loop on your hook. And the raw edge. And then finally through the loop on your hook. Now as you go along here, now that things are starting to just easily line up, it's gonna be much easier to kind of pull that loop through all at once, the raw edge and the third loop. Um, so take your time with this. This is a new method for a lot of people. Seaming is not necessarily a preferred way to crochet these days. I know low sew, continuous rounds, all day, every day are everybody's jam, but Doing the seam work for these ears is what gives it its structure. When you go to work seam work like this, this is what gets the ears the ability to stand upright all day when you wear them at the parks. So I promise you, this will make your life much easier rather than crocheting it all in one piece. It's gonna give your ears such a beautiful upright look. And as you can see, as we're connecting this ear strip to the ear base, it's going to curve with the outside of the ear base. The last seaming stitch will be worked into technically those unworked loops of the foundation chain. So you'll see that um, I'm gonna work all the way around and I'm gonna meet you until we get to the end here, I'm gonna meet you at the very last seaming stitch so that we can kind of do that together. Careful not to work into the chain too. That, has, that is not going to be where we put a seaming stitch. And then here we have our very last seaming stitch for this side of the ear strip and our last half double crochet stitch to work into and it's third loop, there we go. So we are going to find that last raw edge, again, the last obvious hole that we need, which is the unworked loops here that you'll be working under, and find that last half of double crochet stitch, not the chain two, yarn over, pull through both of those, and then the loop on your hook to complete phase one. Congrats! Phase two, I kind of already jumped the gun here. You're going to chain one at the beginning of phase two, and then we're one more slip stitch into that last 
place that you crocheted your last seaming stitch into. So essentially we're creating a corner to turn our work here. You're then going to work a slip stitch into the next set of unworked loops or technically the first raw edge of the right side of the airstrip and then chain one. And that is phase two, super simple. Turn your work and get ready for phase three. All right, and so you can kind of see, um, if I just kind of take a step back here and let you look at this with me, when we kind of turn our piece inside out, we're gonna have this really pretty, pretty much like seamless, no colors seen on the other side kind of seam here. And it's gonna create also a ridge on the inside of our ear. And that is similar to the original pattern, actually the same exact thing as the original pattern. The only difference is, is that we don't have this longer part of the ear strip because we won't need it. Um, so that's the difference between the two patterns here. All right, so to begin phase three, we are going to start seaming pieces right away. We're working on the right side of our ear strip. Insert your hook into that last place that we made our last slip stitch here. Locate the first half double crochet of the second ear base. Have the second ear base with the right side facing you. Connect your hook into that third loop of that first half double crochet. Again, you're gonna see my trick here, inserting my hook right, wrong side to right side, catching the third loop on the flip. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through the third loop on your hook, pull through the, red, uh, the raw edge on your hook, and lastly, the loop left on your hook. And there's our first seaming stitch. And you're gonna continue to do this. This is the same exact thing that we did with phase one, except we're working with the other edge of our ear strip and the second ear base. So that's the only difference. We're working all the way around. And as a rule of thumb, you should always have the hook inserting into the raw edge first and then the third loop second. And I hope these instructions make sense. Sometimes it's really hard to translate um, our magical ways of designing <laughs> or my magical way of designing. I don't know if it's magical. I think some of my, what I do is kind of like crazy, but um, this is again, just a very like new method of seam work for a lot of people. If you want another way of seeing how this is done, you can go ahead and check out how I do these seaming stitches with the uh, original video. I also explain it there. Work all the way around, get those seaming stitches until we get to that last half double crochet, and I will see you in a little bit. Okay, and let's just work this last uh, seaming stitch together here. Again, don't work into that chain two at the beginning or the end of that round because that is irrelevant and we will not need that <laughs> for now. Uh, insert your hook into the last raw edge, the last third loop, pull through both of those and the loop on your hook to complete our seaming stitch. And then you're going to fasten off with a six inch long tail. And that is very similar to when we began our ear strip with a six inch long tail, we are going to end our ear strip with a six inch long tail. This will help us with sewing later so we don't have to rejoin yarn in any weird way and we will have all kinds of weird ends sticking out all over the place. Perfect, and there we have it. That is one ear complete. Now I know it looks a little messy. Um, you can snip off those initial uh, magic ring tails of the ear bases if you'd like. You won't really need those. And uh, just to show you what this looks like, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this inside out. And this is a step you have to do. So go ahead and flip that inside out, examine your work. You should have a pretty clean look here. It should look kind of like a, a giant Oreo cookie of some sort, but like a weird color, like the weird flavors they come out with. And there we have it, that's one ear complete. Let's go ahead and finish this off by putting our ear insert inside, just, as, just like that. Don't let it hang out side it should tuck in nice and easy if it doesn't you can go ahead and trim it a little bit just so it doesn't stick out um, just like that and that's for some inner structure of our ear and then we're going to go ahead and stuff our ear with some polyfill stuffing so excuse the earthquake <laughs> Um, if you don't want to use polyfill stuffing, I'm kind of showing here, you can actually do a couple of these ear inserts on the inside of an ear. That gives you more of like a flat ear. So that is another look you can do. Um, 
I actually have done that with some ears before and it's actually a great look. It's just not as three dimensional as the stuffing provides. So um, if you're doing like I do with the stuffing here, go ahead and kind of pick it a little bit apart and then add that onto either side of the ear insert on the inside of the ear. Less is more, I find when I kind of stuff a little bit at the beginning and then do the other side, then I can kind of adjust as I see fit. Um, and this is all personal preference. There's no magic amount of stuffing that you can use. You just kind of use what you want and um, there you have it. These ears are so customizable. I would love to know into the comments below, what kind of yarn do you have in mind? Are you using a, a straight up chunky yarn like this? Are you using a chenille yarn, a blanket yarn? Um, this is a category five weight yarn. I found that using category six weight yarns, you can use the same stitch count measurements as this pattern, but um, you might have to adjust it a little bit, but it is possible. Know that the bigger and thicker yarns will add weight to the ears, so just keep that in mind when choosing your yarn. But there's that, awesome. Go ahead and do all these steps again to create your second ear and stuff it, and I will see you in a little bit. And before moving on to the last chapter, we are just gonna compare those two ears side by side. Make sure they're stuffed equally. You don't wanna have lopsided ears, unless that's your aesthetic. And there we have it, two ears done. Congratulations, you have made it to chapter four of this pattern where we begin the final assembly of our pieces. So we have our covered headband, we have one of our ears here. We're gonna begin assembling by doing one ear at a time first, and then we're going to sew the bow on last. So what we'll need to do is get that tapestry needle out and thread it with the six inch long tail of either side of the ear strip. It doesn't really matter, um, but if you are planning colors and where they fall on your ears, this is kind of where you're going to take some time and look at that. The first thing that we do here to assemble this to the headband is that we go ahead and connect that bottom edge of that ear strip to the outer marking that we have. And we just do this with some very loose sewing stitches first, and then you can kind of tighten them up and then continue sewing it down. Um, there is no right or wrong way of doing this. I find that I kind of do this a little differently every time. Um, as we do when we crochet, we learn uh, methods and techniques. Um, I'm not a sewist. I'm a crocheter and knitter first and a sewist dead last. So the technique I'm using here is um, just kind of what I found works for my hands. If you get a couple of stitches started, go ahead and take the time to just remove that stitch marker so you don't injure it. Um, and by injure, I mean don't break your stitch markers by sewing over it. I've done that. I'm speaking from experience. Save your stitch markers. Unless you don't like it, then by all means, uh, break your stitch marker here. But um, here we go. I am just continuously adding some sewing stitches. Once you have that bottom edge of the ear strip firmly sewn down to the headband into that outer marked spot that you marked off, then take the remaining length of your yarn and just weave it into the ear. And um, I get a little anal retentive with how I weave in my ends. You don't have to do it this many times. I'm just kind of psycho. <laughs> I just, I hate the idea of someone wearing these ears or myself wearing these ears. And then I go to take a picture and I just have like this tiny little tuft of yarn just sticking out in the silhouette. Oh, that drives me nuts. So that's why you see me weave it in like a trillion times here, but do it as many times as you think you need to. Um, you can also hide the end of the tail into the headband itself. So if that's something that works for you, then by all means go for it. And that is one edge of the ear strip sewn down. And that is our first step up in the final assembly. All right, and then the next step, you're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side, but with the inner marked spot. 
and you're going to sew the other end of the ear strip down onto the headband at that spot, just like that. Um, and again, this is totally like where you can do the sewing as you see fit. If you start making a couple of these stitches sewing wise and you realize that you measured wrong or you um, wanted to make an adjustment because your initial goal is not being met, do the adjustment before you make 5,000 stitches and then weave your end in. Um, take this time, you can lay the piece flat on a table in front of you. I actually encourage, as I am doing here, um, I encourage you to get sewing on a flat surface because doing it on your lap can kind of leave you in the space of not seeing how this really looks. The flat surface somehow helps me. So there are both ear strip ends sewn down just like that. And then the next step is pretty simple, but we have to do a couple of steps before we get to sewing. So this next step, we are going to sew down the bottom edge of the ear base onto the headband itself. But before we do that, to make your life easier, I've come up with this fun little trick here. I pulled the edge down a little bit and I'm gonna take those locking stitch markers. This is why I said these are important to be locking. And again, be careful with them. The chunkier yarn tends to be a little harder to uh, work through with these stitch markers. You're gonna take those stitch markers and use them to tack and hold the bottom edge of the head of the uh, ear base onto the headband in a couple spots. So I'm doing it in the chain two place from the beginning of the last round of the ear base here on the opposite end of where the fasten off point is. So right here. And then I, the second point that I tack down is the middle point of the bottom edge here of the ear base. And the reason I'm doing this is because I am, again, I'm not an advanced sewist. I can't keep my stitches perfectly like spaced out. I kind of just go a little bit all over the place. So this keeps my stuff even. This keeps my work from getting too sewn down in one part and not sewn down enough in another part. Um, and when we go to sew the edge down here, you want to make sure that it lies flush with the outside edge of the headband. So not going underneath the headband, that's going to affect the fit of your headband. You want to make sure that it's flush with the side of the headband. And when I begin sewing this down, I take a little extra more, I spend a little more time on that chain two slip stitch part of the ear base. And I do that because I wanna make sure that there are no holes here. This is tending, this is where the holes tend to kind of show themselves and you don't want that stuffing to come through. So take a little bit of extra time just in this corner part. And when you do that, you will have a very clean edge to begin with. And then just continue to make sewing stitches all along. You're gonna see me kind of work my needle into the like inside of the headband cover. Um, I like to go onto the inside of these single crochet stitches that you see on the bottom last, I guess it's like second to last row of the ear base, and then back through the inside of the stitches on the headband. And I kind of just keep working like that all the way across until I get to each stitch marker. Once you get to each stitch marker, you can go ahead and remove it. Again, be nice to your stitch markers. If you don't need them anymore, get rid of them. They're gonna be in your way anyway. Um, and that's pretty much it for this step. It's pretty simple. Um, you can speed through this if you are tired of hearing me talk and tired of seeing me work, you kind of get the picture. And uh, yeah, this is like, this is also a good point to, to say, if you find that you just wanna get it sewn down and you don't really care about how clean it looks, but you still want it to look clean, you could totally get a trim from the store. You could get like a little, like a, like a ribbon or something, like some kind of trim and you can, I mean, I know this is a no glue pattern, but you can get a trim and kind of like glue it down onto this seam line if it gets to be a little messy and you just want to get it sewn and you don't really care about it being uh you know crazy I don't know what happened with my camera here <laughs> my camera's going everywhere but yes so there are so many options with these ears um, I'm showing you the most basic form if you want to be monochromatic with it you can if you want to use 
five different yarns you can, but this is such a friendly version of the pattern because if you have nicer yarns that you're not really wanting to add hot glue to or take the risk with hot glue with, then you can totally use these sewing versions of the pattern to make mouse ears with your prettier hand dyed yarns. That's more of what I'm referring to. Like I have a couple of um, yarns that I bought from Sorella that are just gorgeous. And I actually got them from her Disneyland collection that came out this past year. And I absolutely love them, but I haven't been able to use them because I just don't want to put hot glue on them. It feels sacrilegious as a <laughs> crocheter. So this is definitely a method I would use if I were to make mouse ears with those yarns. All right, and then you can totally be done with the sewing if you do one pass across from one side to the other, but I actually do a couple more stitches going back the way it came. That's just, again, the kind of crazy person inside me that's just not satisfied with the one part that I did. <laughs> and then once you're satisfied with how much you've sewn, you can just weave your tail back into your work, either on the headband or on the inside of the ear, snip off any excess, and that should give you a really secure sewn down edge of your mouse ear. Super, super, super simple here. And you can see how these like using our stitch markers to pre-mark everything really does help us in symmetry and keeping things clean and tidy looking. And there you have it, one edge sewn down. Yay! You're gonna repeat the other, uh, repeat the same sewing technique for the other bottom edge on the other side of your ear. And we'll see what that looks like in a little bit. with the second ear, just like we did, starting with the ear strips first, tacking those down onto those marked off places on the headband, and then the bottom edges, and you should be good to go. All right, so you can totally stop here. If you don't want to put a bow on, that's up to you. Um, actually, I've seen these without bows, and they look just fine. But if you're attaching the bow, you can just kind of follow along with what I do if you want, or you can just go ahead and sew it down. This is not a complicated part. This is probably the uh, most straightforward part you're going to see, but you can see my technique and how I do it. I'm, again, just um, not an advanced sewist, but I do um, like to take my time with this part. Um, when I got some feedback from my testers in the past when I was designing this pattern, they mentioned that the bow was the one thing, when they wore these ears all day at the parks, the bow was the one thing that got kind of droopy with the weather so if it was really humid outside for some reason the bow just didn't like to stay upright so you're gonna see me sew it down in a very specific way intentionally so that I make sure that the bow doesn't flop and and droop I want my bow to be perky I want it to be happy looking I want it to match the environment that I'm in because um, that's my aesthetic but if you like a droopy bow by all means you don't have to sew it down this much um, find that midpoint that center point at the top of the headband here and just make a loose stitch kind of get acquainted with where your bow is going to be placed I'm sure you could also use stitch markers here to kind of tack the bow down onto the headband so that you can kind of sew um, freely but this is just personal preference um, I tend to work within the stitches of the headband here. I work with some of the stitches on the back of the bow directly to the left and right of the ear wrap or of the um, of the center wraps. And I do that so that I can kind of get not just the very center of the bow tacked down, but just kind of like a little bit to the left and right of it on the back of the uh, headband here. I also like to mention too, in be sure you know what side of your headband you want the bow to be facing out for. I chose to highlight the warmer colors as my front of my headband for this set of ears, but you could totally do whatever you want. Um, you also don't have to sew the bow down on the middle center point of the headband. You can sew it on 
either side right next to one of those ears, you can sew it kind of like sideways, whatever you like. I mean, this is your bow, whatever you think is good for you and your style. These, the, This pattern is meant to be a jumping off point. So my whole thing is I love yarn bounding. I love taking my projects and seeing how, what, what I can do to push my creative envelope open just a little bit more with every project. So once you, I mean, if you've made your first pair already and you just want to take a chance with it, just go for it. I say like, the most unique ears I've seen are the ones that don't follow exactly what I've done. I've seen some really cool modifications already and know that a lot of modifications and new bows and styles of bows are coming to my channel. So if you have been subscribed for a while or you haven't been subscribed for very long, know that um, I am working really hard to start giving you a library of options of ways that you can customize these ears. I have a couple of different new seaming methods that you can use for the ears. I have a couple of um, just like different ways that you can attach your bows um, that I can't wait to share with you. So please stay tuned for that and know that I am a stay-at-home mom as if I, as I know I've stated that before, but I'm a stay-at-home mom. I um, am also a mom that I'm a solo parent for two thirds of the year because my husband works um, out of town for two thirds of the year. So I do work at my pace that works for me as a mompreneur. So if things don't come out as fast as you want, know that I am always working behind the scenes. If you have any questions or want any help with like, okay, how can I modify this? Like I would be more than happy to help. So know that I am available to you. I just can't always put content out like a machine. <laughs> we are people and not machines, right? Am I right? thought on sewing this bow down um i'm speeding this up a little bit so you can kind of just get on with your day here i would like to say that another good place to tack the bow down is actually using um the ears themselves to keep the tops of the bows upright so if you want to do that um i show how to do that in the worsted weight version of this um modification so if you want to check that video out it is in the um description below there and uh there we go. There's our bow. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if this is up your alley. Please go ahead and stay tuned. Hit the bell button for notifications and have a creative day. I'm so excited. Look at that cute little pair of ears. Alright everyone, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and it was clear enough for you. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me and my socials. You can also contact me via my email and I have all of the comments section as an open forum for any questions. Please let me know. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I am here all the time to be with you in your creative journey. I am so excited that you found my channel. Please stay tuned. I have tons more content coming. I'm actually working up an entire library of different bows that you can work up to go with your mouse ears, or you can just have them as separate bows for hair clips, for headbands, you name it. So please hit that bell button to be notified of any new video content coming out. I am so happy that I get to do this all the time. Being a Disney nerd is super fun. So please join me in my creative journey. And on that note, have a creative day adding magic to your stitches in your own way, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.